Hey guys, so in the last video we added this little icon here that we could click on and we could add a new channel but we weren't seeing it show up after we created the channel we would have to refresh so what we're going to do now is update the cache so we actually see it pop up right when we create it and we're also going to fix a little bug that we have so if I come over here to view team the way we were doing it is if we don't say what team ID we have uh, if we come into our code up here we just say grab the first index so we check if there's a current ID given otherwise we just say grab the first index of the team and so this causes a little bug in our code so if I try to create a team notice how it craps out and the reason for that is if we take a look at current team uh, it's not available right so we just get grab the team with the first one and if we look down here, we're using the current team ID. So instead of using the current team ID, we should use team.id. And that will give us the actual team that we have open. And then that error will go away. So let's see. C5 creates it okay. Give it a little refresh. And we see it there, perfect. Okay, so next we're gonna see this pop up. And the way we're going to do this is with the update. So I'm going to copy this. This is from the documentation of Apollo GraphQL. Um, we're in the optimistic UI section. They have how to update. So we're going to come over here to add channel modal. And this happens after we mutate or in this mutate function. So I'm going to paste in this and I'm just going to save this. So how this works is this update function gets the data back from whatever we updated. And what you can do is you can read a GraphQL query and then update that query. So here they're update they're reading a comment query and then adding a comment to it. So what we want to do is actually read the query that we have here, the all teams query, and then update it by adding the new channel we just created. Now we need to be able to access this query from here. So we're going to refactor a little bit of our code and bring the uh, all the queries and mutations into a file out here. So I'm just going to create a new folder called GraphQL. And I'm going to create a new file called team.js. And then here I'm going to import GQL from GraphQL tag. And then I'm just going to export what we have in our sidebar here. So get rid of that and paste it here. And it doesn't like it because this is our only export, but we'll be adding more exports in the future, so I'm going to ignore this red line. And so here I'm now, instead of importing there, I'm just going to import the uh, query. So it was all teams query. So all teams query and it was from up up graphql slash teams and unable to resolve graphql slash oh it's team not teams and we're going to do the same thing in our add channel modal up here so now we have this all teams query and we can grab that because this is what we want to update. So when we read this in, we're going to read what the current query we have saved in the cache. And I'm going to get rid of these comments here. So what we want to do is we want to read data. And then for us, and we can console log this data so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'll show it to you. But I believe we should have this structure. So we should have an all teams, and then we should have channels. So I don't know if all teams is going to be here or if it's just channels. I want to say it's just channels, just from the way that the comments worked. So and I'm going to push a new channel. Now the channel here, we get data back from this uh, mutation. So we really want to get the channel that we created. So here, when we create a channel, instead of returning a boolean, what I want to return is a channel. And I'm going to make this nullable so we have a chance to actually return a null channel. And while we're at it, we should actually just do a 
channel response and create an OK, which is a Boolean, a channel, and that's of type channel, and then any errors we get. Uh, we don't expect any errors for this, but just in case, channel response. So give that a save. Now, the data we get, the name of it, is going to be the name of our mutation. So the name of our mutation here is create channel. So I'm going to call it create channel. And the data that's going to be here is this response object. So we're going to have an OK channel and errors. So we're going to say we only really want to update if create channel is OK. So we can get rid we can get the OK in the channel from create channel. And we can say if OK, then we want to do stuff. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if not OK, we'll just return. So then we're going to read our query. And now we're returning the channel that we just created here. So that's what we can push on to our channels object here. Oops, so I'm going to say channels or channel. And then we just write this query back to the store and this will update the cache. And the query that we're doing is the same query we have here. Or sorry, same query we have here, which is all teams query. So I'll we'll output this data so you can see what it looks like, but this looks pretty good. Now, because we changed our create channel here, we actually need to select the fields. So we want to get OK. We also want to get channel. And from our channel, we want the selection field to match what we're selecting here. So ID and fragment, or sorry, ID and name. So we could set up a fragment, but this is very simple that I don't even think it's worth. So ID and name here, we're gonna grab the ID and name as well, and then when we update, it should be the same. So let's take a look at this. So if we open up our console, create a new channel, we'll call it C6, run it, and bad request. Let's see what the error is. Oh, we also need to change our resolver. So I don't see any errors here, but we changed our channel response, so now we need to change our channel resolver. I forgot about that. So now here, we're gonna say const channel and return OK, which is true, and then our channel. And then here, we can import the format errors and return those as well. You know what, we'll, we'll console log the errors in case there's any. So OK is false, and then errors is equal to format errors, error. So let's give that a run again. Refresh. Oh, and our server just needed a second to restart. Okay. So now C6. And we're getting the same thing. So let's see. We're getting no error here. Let's see what it says. So network error request failed with 404. Not 404, it's just bad request. So not sure what that is, so I'm gonna head over here to Apollo. This keeps track of the mutations that happen. So here's the mutation that we just ran. And I'm gonna say show and graph QL. And I'm just gonna try, oh, that should be name, not name. I wonder if that's the only thing that's messed up. So what I can do is I can actually run this and see what the response is. And that's being really slow. I don't know if this, the dev tools is just slow or if it's my server. Let's try running it here too. So C7, and let's see. Okay, so we have all teams and then all teams and then we wanna get the first team and then channels. Okay, yeah. 
So all teams. And then we need to know which team we're currently on so we know which channel to push to. So we're not passing it anything in the props, are we? We're passing the team ID, so actually we can we can find this. So const team the index of the team. And the way we're going to do it is the same way we're doing it over here with the find index. Oops, we could also pass the index in. That would work too. But this is not too bad. So find index of data dot all teams. And we're looking for the ID where the ID matches team ID. And the team ID is coming from the props here. And then we're going to grab that team ID. So we, we find the team and all teams that we want. And then we grab the channels and we're pushing the channel onto it. So refresh that. So let's do a C8. So no errors here, and we can see C8 pops up right away. So cool. So that's working now. And update happens after the mutation actually completes. If you want to make this even faster, you can do what's called optimistic UI. And the way this works is it'll automatically run. And if we copy this, so before the mutation even runs, it'll update the UI. So we don't have to wait for the server to respond. And what we do is we just populate our view with fake data or the data that we know um, we should be getting. So I'm gonna call this create channel because that's the name of our mutation. And the type name here is channel. And there's only two props here so an ID so we don't know what the ID is going to be because we haven't actually created it yet but the name we know what the name is going to be and so the name is values.name so the point of this is to update the UI and show the name of the channel before we even get the response from the server and it will automatically go away if uh, we get a bad one um, and oh, we just forgot missing field. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here we have to do the re whole response object. So okay is true. And then channel is equal to this guy. So now we rerun that C10. And so this will just be faster to see the UI change than if you do update. So missing field type name in. It wants me to do a type name. I guess it wants me to add a type name to this. I don't even know what I would add for the type name for this, honestly. Uh, if I go to Apollo, I should be able to look at the store, though. And I can see what the values. Actually, I can look at the query, right? Or it's a mutation. I can see the return. OK, so we're, ask, we're also grabbing the type name of create channel. I guess that is a mutation. Let's try adding that in. I actually don't know what the type name should be here. Let's see. C11 now. Okay, seems to be happy. It's updating, looks good. So now there's one last thing I want to do real quick. So when I click on these, I'd like to switch which channel I'm on. So the way we're going to do that is we don't need this add channel modal anymore. In our sidebar here, we have uh, the current team we're on, which we have here, and we're passing the channels in, right? What I also want to do is pass in the team ID. So the team.id. So that way, in our channels, when I click on a channel, I'm going to use this team ID to actually create the URL. Because what the URL we want to do is the team ID and then uh, whatever the channel ID is. So if I come over here to my channels, we now have a team ID object or prop coming in. And we're going to just pass that to our, our map function. So 
this is going to be x comma i and we're going to pass to our channel and our channel I don't know if it channel is using I nope it's not using I so we're not even going to pass I in so X is our actual channel we could call this C and then we're also going to pass in a team ID which we grab up here so in our team ID we now want to make this guy clickable and we need to add a link so a link and this is coming from React Router DOM. And we're just going to wrap our sidebar item. And to create the URL, like I said, we're going to be using going to slash view team. And we're going to grab the team ID and then the ID of the channel. There we go. And I messed this up. This should be an M. Cool. So now when I click on the different channels, okay, they look like links now. Um, check the top level render called. Oh, they should have a key. We just need to move the key up to the link like we did last time. So now if I click on this, notice up here, the URL changes each time. The team stays static because they're all on the same team, but the channel itself changes. But you'll notice hashtag general does not change. And the reason for that is we are not really passing the channel in. And our channel is kind of locked in our sidebar right here. When we really need it in our view team, we need to pass it to our header and our send message. So what we're going to be doing in the next video is lifting our state up. So that our state lives in more in our view team, or at least the GraphQL query will. So we can pass it to our sidebar, our send message, and our header. So everyone has access to what our current uh, channel name is. But that is it for this video, guys. We're now able to create channels um, and then switch to them. As you can see, the URL is changing as we're... So now we just need to be able to handle the switch in our UI on the right. And then very soon, we're going to be getting into adding other users to our teams, and then finally doing some real-time chatting with subscriptions. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.